Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem D from Code Forces Round 468 entitled Peculiar Apple Tree. The problem states in Arcadie's garden there grows a peculiar apple tree that fruits one time per year. Its peculiarity can be explained in the following way. Dot dot dot. And I'm not going to read the rest of this problem description because it's uh, very confusing. Probably one of the most confusing problem statements I've covered so far. So the highlights are that uh, this tree contains what they call inflorescences. And at time zero, each one of these if inflorescences is going to blossom an apple. And uh, from that point on, uh, the apples are going to roll down the tree. And if at any point uh, two apples collide with each other at the same inflorescence, they annihilate each other. So it, uh, the problem statement reads, if there are five apples in the same inflorescence at the same time, only one will not be annihilated. And if there are eight apples, all apples will be annihilated. Um, and then the question asks us to help Arcady with accounting the number of apples he will be able to collect from the first inflorescence, i.e. the one at the base of the tree, during one harvest. Um, and uh, the only other thing to note is that there's going to be between two and 100,000 inflorescences. And so let's take a look at uh, an example, and hopefully it'll make the problem a little bit more clear. So here our input is n equal to 5, meaning that we're going to have 5 inflorescences, and uh, then n minus 1 integers here. So each one of these integers, you can imagine that there is a 2, 3, 4, uh, one, or a two, three, four, five underneath each one of these integers, and that's a, a, a link between uh, one and two, uh, two and three, two and four, and two and five in terms of sort of a graph. Uh, so that would look like the following. And so what we're going to do is any time an apple reaches the bottom, uh, Arcady has the ability to put that in a bucket. So immediately Arcady can put uh, apple number one in uh, our bucket. And then from there, each one of the apples at the levels above is going to drop down to the inflorescence that it's next connected to. So that's going to look like the following. The two drops down to the base, and then the three, the four, and the five are or where previously inflorescence number two was. Uh, and so now what we're, what's going to happen here is that uh, because we have apples colliding, these are going to cancel out in pairs. So three and four are going to disappear, and then we're left with five and two. So Arcady can grab apple number two, throw that in his bucket, and then apple uh, Arcady can grab apple number five. And so the solution to this input would be three. Let's take a look at a more involved example uh, to see how this uh, works. So once again, uh, you know, we have our graph and the uh, initial five inflorescences still have the same connections, but we've added, you know, four more app, four more inflorescences slash apples. And so well, let's walk through uh, what's going to happen again here. So Arcady is going to take the first apple, throw it in his bucket, and then the rest of these are going to drop down to the uh, inflorescence at the next lowest level. So at this point, we're going to have some collisions and some apples uh, canceling each other out. So uh, 7 and 9, 3 and 4, and then 6 and 2, which is going to leave us with 8 and 5. So at this point, 5 is going to drop down to the base, and then 8 is going to drop down to this level. Uh, and from here, we're going to see that there aren't going to be any more collisions, so we can throw both apple 5 and apple 8 in our bucket. So once again, uh, the solution to this input is also going to be 3. So let's take a look what this graph looked like uh, originally and highlight the apples that we were able to collect. And what you'll notice is that uh, we're only ever able to collect either one or zero apples for a given height or a given level. And uh, we're able to collect one when there's an odd number of apples. So basically, if there are, you know, n number of con uh, collisions if there's two times n plus one apples we're going to be able to get that that extra apple and the reason that this works is because we know that for any apples at a certain height uh, it's they're going to collide with each other at some point whether that's uh, at the next level or at the base at some point all the apples uh, are going to eventually uh, collide with at least one other apple from the same level if there's apples to collide with, which is just going to leave us with either zero or one apples by the time we get to the base for that given level. So all we need to do to solve this problem is to construct a representation of our graph, which we're going to use using an adjacency list. Uh, an adjacency list is simply a vector of vectors, and uh, for each index, it points to the connection. So 
inflorescence number one can uh, connect to inflorescence number six and two. For two, it connects to three, four, and five, so on and so forth. And then from there, we can use a simple depth for a search algorithm to keep track of how many apples are at each level. So we're going to declare a vector, and while we're doing our DFS, we are just simply going to do uh, keep track of you know how many apples are at this level and then once we've completed our DFS we're gonna loop over that vector and just modulus to each one of the values that we've stored and sum all those and that'll give us our answer so let's take a look at the code so at the top here we have two type aliases that I'm just using so that I don't need to type out vector vector int uh, twice once in the DFS uh, declaration function declaration and then once here uh, so VI is just vector of integers and VVI is a vector of vector of integers so we come down to our main function we'll come back to our D DFS function in a second and we uh, initialize n um, and read that from our input then we declare our adjacency list which is a vector of vectors and our vector for keeping track of the apple count at each depth or height and uh, then we simply uh, initialize the values for our or, or set the values for our apple count vector so we're going to read in our input and then push back uh, the current uh, i plus one th index so when you have one two 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 you're going to end up for index one uh, we have a vector uh, of just two and then for index two we have a vector of three four five and so then we have our adjacency list uh, set up and we can pass that as the first parameter to our DFS function as a const ref as, as well as the apple count vector as just a ref because we're going to need to modify that and our current inflorescence is one and our current depth is one. And so all we do while we're doing this DFS is for each depth we do a post increment and then we uh, call the DFS function for each one of the inflorescences uh, that we can get to from our current inflorescence. And uh, when we're making this call to DFS, we have to make sure that we're doing a plus one to our depth. Uh, and that's basically it. So once we finish our DFS recursion, we come out, initialize our answer integer to zero, and then we loop over our uh, values in our apple count vector and we do the modulus 2 operation uh, plus equals to our answer and then at the end we'll end up with our number of apples that we can collect and note that these last two to three lines we could actually replace with the accumulate function but effectively uh, accumulate function plus a lambda mod 2 but uh, effectively these are the same thing so both will work and note that the complexity, the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be linear because linear in the number of inflorescences that we have uh, due to the fact that we're only ever visiting each inflorescence once. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.